Hello again, welcome to module four. In this module, we're talking all about trigonometric functions. But before we really get into that, we've got to talk about degrees and radians. Even what they are, how, why we have both, we really want to compare these two things and say what they're for. There's a lot of people were introduced to radians, but what are they? Well, at the end of the day, we're often going to be looking at some angle. You might have some shape, and you're interested in what this angle is. Or it might be something like this, and you're interested in this angle. Well, we're used to being able to describe these in terms of degrees. The degrees of the angle gives us a measurement of that angle. So do radians. Radians is just another way of measuring the same thing, just with different units. And in fact, think of it similar to, say, temperature. We talk about Celsius and Fahrenheit. They both describe a temperature, just two different units. Same thing if you're talking about mass, you can talk about something being kilograms or pounds. It's just different ways of measuring the same thing, and it depends on what you're doing. Sometimes radians are useful, sometimes degrees are useful, and we're going to see in the later videos, you can convert between them anyway. They're just, again, two ways of measuring an angle. That's all they are. So, let's take a look at our trigonometric functions. Well, we're going to start with sine, cos, and tan, because they're the ones you're going to know, uh, but we'll also look at the inverse cases later. And I mostly just want to show you them. We've got these trigonometric functions, and it's important to know their shape. This is showing what they are like for the first period. We've got sine, cos, and tan all in one, and you can see it tries to relate it to the unit, the unit circle. This is going to be useful when you start thinking of the cast method and trying to identify other solutions, but it's just showing you the shape for that first period, the first one cycle of any of these waves. So sine, cos, and tan, but really it doesn't do it justice. Because what we can also look at is this one. This one's not necessarily lined up. You can see we have sine, cos, and tan. Again, trying to relate it to the circle. But the main thing here is that we see it repeats. We've got this same wave going on and on. These sinusoidal curves that repeat onwards. And that's incredibly important in this module. You're going to be finding values of x. And if you're not given a range, a set area between one x value and another, like over here, where it's just between 0 and 2 pi, or 0 and 360 degrees, depending on which unit you want to use, if we're not given a range, the number of solutions can be infinite. As long as there's one solution, there's an infinite solution, because the same function repeats itself. If we have a solution at one point, say, right around here, a period later, it's going to repeat itself. And then a period after that, it repeats itself. And if we go a period the other way, it would repeat itself. So it would be an infinite number of solutions if the range is not defined. And the range will actually define how many solutions we get. Because if it's a smaller range, you're limiting the number of solutions. A bigger range, again, it can repeat itself. And also, again, when you go back to the ca looking at finding multiple solutions, we're going to talk about the cast method much later. But even when we're looking at this one over here, if we have one period we're considering from 0 to, say, 360 degrees, there often can still be two solutions. You can see the, say, the tan function, where we might have a solution at one point, it could repeat itself within one period. So, again, just a few quick things to keep in mind when you're solving questions in this module. So, good luck!